So the Hyperledger Explorer is a tool created to work in conjunction with the Fabric network. It gives the user an ability to see into the permission ledger and view any of the blocks and transactions that have been created. Also, you have the ability to view and invoke and deploy any of the chain code associated with the network. Um, it's pretty good with giving a more realistic view instead of having just the theory of what's going on on the blockchain. You can see all of the parts that are comprised in the network, and you can view multiple networks on our Explorer. So, Currently, the Explorer is in the version 1.15. We released that around April of this year. Uh, we support all of the latest technologies uh, and we're supporting versions 1.4 and 2.3 for the Hyperledger fabric. We have a branch already there in alpha release for the Hyperledger Aroha integration. And we also support a Docker image to kind of make it easier for anyone who would like to stand up the network. Um, so we allow this application on the client side to be deployed in three different ways. You could have it standalone, you could have it as a Docker container, which I just discussed, and you could have it deployed in clusters like in AWS. Um, just, we have a couple more notes about it. So currently the top contributors to the Explorer in our community is DTCC, on uh, we have teams in the US and in India, and we also have Fujitsu, which is also contributing to the overall Explorer. Um, we submitted proposals to get out of incubation um, around December of 2019. And uh, we earned our CWI badge in November. So just to get into more details on the features of the Explorer, we're going to have a demo to show standing up a network and actually seeing it on the page and all of the steps in between. But a quick overview would just go through the features that are most important. Our blockchain has the typical standups where you have transactions and blocks and nodes and chain codes, and we allow on the dashboard, you can easily see how much blocks are associated with a particular network, the transactions that are also associated, and how much nodes are active on that network. We allow you to sync up to more than one network. So if you had to manage a cluster of different networks, you could easily switch tabs and change the view to see what is going on on that network at the live moment. Um, we have different graphs to show the transaction and block activity, whether you want to chop it down to how much blocks have been coming in, in the last hour and how much blocks are happening per minute. Uh, we also have a feature where you could see the latest block on the chain as well as um, we could view the chain codes associated with any transactions that are currently coming in. Um, it dynamically discovers any new channels and we allow for it to switch the data presentation up at the top and you get real-time notifications for any new blocks. So if you are already logged in on the application, if someone submits another block or any more transactions, you get a notification in real time. Uh, and it has a good amount of user management functionalities. So you can add users who are allowed to either come in as an admin or just view the same client base. Okay. Let me get to 
Next slide. So for the application so far, we have some next plan, uh, what we're working on and what we want to add. Uh, we have the endorsement policy is something that we are going to look more into. Uh, let's see if I can get more information. And exposing the metrics as per each peer via um, Prometheus. Uh, we want to eventually raise up the Explorer so that you can see the next level ledger data and query the platform. And you could track any historical operations that have happened against the train and give it a better view for data analytics. So if you want to analyze the schema on the ledger, you can go ahead and do so. So right now, um, we are going to have Anil, who's going to show what the application looks like right now and a quick demo going through standing up like, uh, your own personal fiber network and then having it sync up to the Explorer. Yeah, thanks, Mikia. Uh, so I'll start sharing my screen and go over the demo. So. Uh, let me know once you're able to see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? You can see it. Yeah. So this demo has two parts to it. One is the setup of uh, the fabric, uh, a sample fabric network, and uh, the setup of the explorer part of it. So is the sample fabric that we, we are going to show in the demo will, will contain two uh, peer nodes and an orderer node. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's get started with that, okay. So we start with downloading the uh, downloading a, fam a sample fabric uh, scripts. So this scripts, uh, it contains scripts to actually start a, uh, start a uh, fabric network with the, uh, two uh, peer nodes and an orderer node. So it's a sample uh, network that gets started by running that the script. So we are downloading that script now. So after that, we use this curl command to actually download the fabric, uh, Docker fabric images, the binaries as well as the config files. Yeah, so that's what is happening now. So after this is done, yeah. so after this is done, we use uh, the sample script that I spoke about. Uh, we run the command called network.sh to actually start up the uh, the fabric sample fabric network with two uh, air nodes and an order of node and we use the option create channel to uh, start the network and create a channel also okay so the channel is uh, i mean the network got started and the channel got created so uh, we can use this docker ps command to, to see the status so this shows uh, three fabric images, each representing a peer node. So for example, you can see that there is org1 node, there is org2 node, and there is order. So there are three nodes uh, which are up and running at the moment. So after we have started the, uh, the sample test network, we are ready to deploy a chain pool. So we use the deploy cc command to actually deploy a chain code for this sample network. Uh, and then after we deploy it, uh, we, 
we are ready to invoke the uh, chain port that we just deployed. Yeah, so we are, here we are invoking the chain code. Yeah, so whatever environmental variables that need to be set up to invoke the chain code, we did that there. Now, uh, with this, we are done with the fabric part of the setup. Now, let's move on to the uh, explorer part. So we start that by downloading the repo uh, using the git clone command. We download the repo and uh, one thing that I want to mention here is that this particular setup is such that uh, the fabric nodes as well as the explorer are uh, hosted on the same server. So it's a local, uh, it's a local setup basically. And uh, uh, so the explorer part, we begin by uh, installing the API or the backend components. We do that here, we are installing the backend components. After we install the backend components, we install the web components or the frontend components. Yeah, we are installing the frontend components. After which we are going to build the uh, web app, web components. And one more thing is that here, even in the Explorer also, uh, the, the same server is serving both the API as well as the web part. So it's the same side. It's one server acting as both API server and web server. And here we are building the, the web component. So, <clears throat> yeah, so once we are uh, done with uh, the installation part, uh, what we do next is uh, we uh, make some changes to the config files of the Explorer so that it this Explorer is able to point to the sample fabric network that we just started in the previous step. So here we, uh, we have a file called uh, uh, firstnetwork.json where we go and reference the, uh, the full path of the peer nodes. So we make changes to it, uh, to the full path so that it is able to connect to the uh, network that we just uh, created. Okay. So once this is done, uh, the next step, uh, what we do is we create, we run a database script. Okay. So what this database script does is that it creates a Postgres SQL DB. Okay. Uh, it does that. And then it uh, uses that connection profile from previous step to connect to the sample network, pull all the data from the sample network and uh, put it in this, uh, the, the, the DB that Postgres DB that got created. So it's running the DB script right now. So after this uh, script is complete, we will have a, a DB called Fabric Explorer, which will be created, which will contain the, uh, the Fabric Network data. So you can see that the Fabric Explorer DB has been created. Okay, so with this, uh, our setup part is done. Okay, so our setup part of the Explorer is done. Now, what we do is the, the we start the server, uh, which, will, which is going to serve both the API and the web. So we're gonna go to start that server. Uh, after we do that, we are all set and we are ready to uh, launch our browser and uh, start looking at the network data. So we here, we select the network, we enter our credentials. Our app is ready to be viewed now. So we log in and this, as you can see, this is the uh, user interface of our Explorer. So it contains different tabs. So the dashboard is the home uh, tab. 
so this contains all the uh, summary of information of the network the number of blocks transactions nodes chain codes everything and then we have the network tab the list of uh, peer nodes and other details related to each peer and then blocks so the the list of blocks present in that and the number of I mean, the list of transactions present in the network all that information is present in different tabs here chain codes the channels everything okay so next what we are going to do is we are going to invoke a set of chain codes so that uh, transactions get created and blocks get added to the uh, to the fabric network so we are just running a sample command from 1 to 100 so it's invoking chain code and the same uh, that uh, this is the invoking of the chain code and transactions everything gets reflected on the user interface so this is how it will look uh, as you can see the uh, transactions and the blocks are increasing as and when the changes happen in the network it gets reflected here Yeah, so in all the tabs, we can see that the changes happening in the network as is getting reflected. Yeah, I think yeah, that's pretty much it actually uh, with the demo. So I'm going to stop sharing. If there are any questions, you can go ahead and ask this question. I think we have a question from Shane uh, saying, is there an interface to see private data collections? So I just wanted to clarify, are you meaning like between a private network itself on the blockchain network that's there or because currently if the network is private, as long as the person standing up the network has the keys, then they can display any of the nodes or blocks, transactions. Yeah, so you can see private data collections. Is there any other questions? So let me show you guys. If anyone has any further questions and they want to either get the Blockchain Explorer for their own personal use, you could get to our GitHub link we've listed in the slides. You can also see the Docker image, and we have documentation that goes through standing up and maintaining anything dealing with the Blockchain Explorer. Um, we are on Rocket Chat. The community is there, and anyone who is, you know, has questions, troubleshooting. They just add, like ask the question into the chat and there's always someone who will respond back, whether it's one of the moderators on our side and the developers or one of the people who use the Explorer on their end, always willing to help. I think we'll see if we're good on time. We can ask a couple more questions if you guys have any. But.
I think that's pretty much it, uh, Vicky. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. All right. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining our demo.